Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Ice Storm Shadow, Matthew Homequest, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to the Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous Beta, as we finally find our way back to Canabras. Took us one episode to fall down to Neathholm, and five to find our way back out. Sounds about right. Though, to be fair, that does still put us ahead of the Mongrel Men, who um, were stuck down there for, what, 20,000 gongs? Anyway, we are clearly not out of the woods just yet, so... Let's see what we've got going on here. Oh, and uh, since we're clearly heading into a fight, we'll go ahead and prep for that. Well? All right, let us proceed. Hi. The half-orc before you, wearing armor adorned with Iomide's golden swords, is clearly exhausted. She obviously hasn't gotten much sleep over the last few days. There's soot on her face and fresh blood on her sword. Her hazel eyes are hard and focused, and her firm voice sounds accustomed to giving orders. She sizes you up, surprised, judging whether you are friend or foe and opens her mouth to ask you something, but freezes when she spots an Evia. By the goddess, Nevi, I... I'd almost lost all hope. Everything's fine, Beth. I'm here. I'm here. An Evia strokes Irabeth's head and whispers something in her ear, then stands back and points at you. This here's Creed Ironfang. He rounded up those of us who survived the fall and led us up to the surface. Without him, we'd never have made it out. She turns to you. Creed, let me introduce you to my wife, Mirabeth Tirabade, head of the Eagle Watch. The half-orc nods. Until the army arrives, I'm the temporary warden of Canabras, and you're just in time. As you can see, we're in the middle of a battle and... Her stern voice grows a little softer. Thank you for getting Anivia out of there. Where are we? The Grey Garrison. Until recently, it served as a barracks for Crusaders, but it's now been taken over by cultists. What is the target of this battle? When the demons attacked the city, their main target was the Ward Stone. I trust I don't have to explain to you what the Wardstone is and how important it is to the Crusaders. We must retake it at any cost, or the fall of Kenebris will be the beginning of the end of the Crusades, and with them, the rest of the world. I see that you have had a difficult journey to the surface. You need to rest, but there's a lot riding on this battle. I have no right to command you, but I am asking you to help us. I have important information about the location of a cultist den. Very good. Report to me in full when we get back to the Defender's Heart. It's our temporary headquarters. Right now, the most dangerous cultists are here, the ones occupying the Grey Garrison. We met some mongrels who live beneath Canabras. This is Lan. Surprise steals across Irabeth's face but it quickly gives way to respect. Most people in Canabras think that the children of the First Crusaders are simply a legend. 
Other people say that the day you emerge on the surface heralds the start of the end of the world. I'm not superstitious, but the situation is apocalyptic all right. Having a living legend on our side can't hurt. Come on, living legend? A walking folktale, maybe. I just need to make sure I don't turn into a running joke. Thank you, Lan. What's the situation in the city? Irabeth slowly drags her hand over her face. The city is gone. Most of the defenders, including the dragon Terendalev, fell in the first few hours. The civilians have either fled or died in the chaos. The place is overrun with cultists and demons. Don't talk like that. Kenebris hasn't fallen. Not while it still has defenders like you and me. Sweet words don't change the grim truth. No, she's right. Thank you, Knight. Until we no longer have the strength to hold a weapon, until Iomade abandons us, we will fight for Canabras. Tell me about the Wardstone. Why is it so important? The Wardstones are a gift of Iomade, created personally by her herald, a mighty angel and general of the Celestial Armies. The Wardstones keep the world wound from expanding. They stand along the border of the territory controlled by the demons, creating a barrier to keep them inside. The Canabras Obelisk was the first to be placed. It is the key to the whole barrier. We cannot leave it in the hands of these monsters from the Abyss. How did the Wardstone end up in the Great Garrison? The demons have long laid siege to Canabras, but this time their Lord Discari appeared in the flesh. He ripped the Wardstone from the ground and hurled it halfway across the city, to here. I thought the stone was destroyed, but it seems all is not lost. Yet. Discari has gone, but the Wardstone is still surrounded by a whole horde of those creatures. What are they going to do to it? Nothing good, that's for certain. But how did he do that? He's a demon. The Wardstone should have burned his filthy hide. It should have, but what happened, happened. We don't know why. Let's not waste any time. To battle! That's the spirit. Irabeth turns to one of her fighters. You. Take Anivia to the rear. The rest of you, with me. You hear labored breathing, interspersed with disgruntled muttering. Horgus is holding his rapier hilt in a white-knuckled grip. A bead of sweat trickles down from his temple. Lord Horgus Squirm, forgive me. I did not realize we had civilians among us. My people will escort you somewhere safe to the extent that anywhere in Canabras can be said to be safe right now. That's right, fighting spirit is the one thing we've got plenty of. With a crooked smile, Lan plucks at his bowstring to test the tension on it, then lowers his voice. Actual fighting power? That's not so great. Fighting know-how, even worse. But fighting spirit? At least we're rich in that. For Ioma Day, for the Queen, kill the beasts! Irabeth raises her blade, and the soldiers, inspired by her cry, rush into battle with renewed vigor. Right, I guess we should follow. And we're fighting. Well, this is slightly awkward. Oh, hi. I am pretty sure those guys weren't there a second ago, but okay. It's fine. I suppose that's just the perception system working against us. 
It's kind of a hard cut off at the edge of your vision, so we saw the closest guys, but not the farther ones. Make every strike count. I also noticed that Lan is back to single shot mode, so we'll cycle his bow. And that should fix his flurry. Nice hit. Plus, we're still getting credit for those kills, so I'm certainly not complaining. need to get our guys up front, push into that next room before they uh, clog up that doorway. You know it's coming. Oh, shoot. Who did that? Okay. Um, I think Camellia just took out one of the crossbowmen, but this guy is the one who just released that negative channel. We'll have to remember they can do that. Endure this. Thank you, Lan. Let's start bringing you up. Okay, these guys are about to bottleneck themselves, so we've got to push through before that happens. Go for their hearts. Oh, hey, Creed finally gets into the fight. Come on, buddy. Gotta say, I am not used to having a main with less than 30 movement. Oh, and they've clogged the door. Thank you, Staunton Vane. Your efforts are appreciated. see if Lan can snake a shot through that doorway. The answer was yes, but also no. Hey. Creed got to do a thing. For Canabras, for the Queen! Yep, yep, you go ahead. We'll be right behind you. We just need to uh, acquire valuable resources for the battles ahead. A truly noble endeavor. bad. Every one of these masterwork weapons is worth about a hundred gold in resale. Oh, you know what? 
someone also pointed out to me that we apparently picked up a composite longbow somewhere. I should have equipped it earlier, but uh, I forgot to put it in my notes. Of course, now I'm uh, trying to resist the urge to go through everything else we picked up with a fine tooth comb. Just to uh, see if there's anything else we can use right now. But the uh, equipment wrangling is for between episodes. We'll worry about that a bit later. Oh, hey, side loot. Nothing all that noteworthy, but we'll take it. Oh my. Hey, I know you. So you're one of these cultists? How's it going, pal? Want to join? Your lot will all be dead soon, but we'll be alive. I, uh, I can't. Come on, leave these losers. The Crusades are over. Soon the demons will rule the whole world. Here goes nothing. All hail Baphomet! Cowardly traitor! <laughs> and now begins the killing. Followed by a light salad. Let's see here. Okay, I think Irabeth and her lot have the left, so we'll just focus on the right. Off to a good start. Good Kaiser. Buffs up. And into the fray. Nice. Yeah, I'd say they've definitely got the left. So I think we're doing the right thing here. Discari cultist. All right, we've got a cluster of high priority targets in back, but we can't reach them just yet. So we'll have to make a hole. Lovely. Ah, Sela, you have failed me. Okay, let's start bringing Kaiser towards the back line. Blood. 
We are starting to lose momentum. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, that is an even bigger problem. We've got to take out that back line. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. You know what? Let's just push through. We've got potions. There we go. Also, ow. Nice. All right, we're getting some of that momentum back. Ah, right. Hang in there, Camellia. Thank you, Kaiser. Just gotta get some pressure off Cam. That'll do. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty rough. Make every strike count. Nice. Gotta get him out of that stairwell, though. That is awkward. <laughs> Left side's almost done. Creed. Yes. The inheritor, guide my blade. Let me draw the first blood. Oh, that was that was weird. Kaiser gets a free turn, so I am not complaining. Yeah, yeah, I think we're fine. Endure this. Fantastic. Oh, we have one guy left. Come on, Erebeth. We got stuff to do. And there we go. Let's get our guys patched. Oh, and uh, someone actually told me how to use potions on Kaiser. I will say the uh, implementation is slightly obtuse, but uh, I appreciate that it's actually there.
The stairs are severely damaged. This way is impassable. The door won't budge. Looks like it's locked from the other side. Hmm, that's probably normal. I'm assuming pretty much all these doors are impassable. Yep, that's what I thought. I mean, we can uh, definitely see that there is scenery in these adjacent rooms. We just can't actually get to it yet. Okay, up we go. Hmm. What's this? Do we have guests? The face of this demoness could be called pretty if it had eyes. Her mouth slowly widens into a smug smirk. Just in time. The place is a bit of a mess, and I haven't even poured the blood into the goblets yet. Why don't you... Oh. The demon's mouth drops open in surprise, and she brings her manicured hand up to cover it. What an unexpected surprise. Staunton, my little sweetheart, long time no see. I miss you so much. Have you missed me? Admit it, you missed me terribly. The aged dwarf from Irabeth's troop, silent up to now, spits on the floor. His hardened, craggy face, like storm-weathered stone, twists as if in pain. Monago, you again, you bitch. Minago, the one who... The half-orc is too well-bred to spit on the floor, but the name sounds like a slur on her tongue. Be careful, she's one of the deadliest creatures in the whole demon horde. She was once responsible for a massacre in Canabras. She must be back to finish what she started. Staunton, do you know this demon? Does he know me? Staunton, darling, tell them all how close we were. That bitch. The dwarf's voice rasps like rusted metal. She's the one who led me astray. She's the reason my life has gone to the abyss. She's the reason why Dresden fell. Oh my, like butter wouldn't melt. Monago threatens Staunton with a dainty, clawed finger. What I remember is how eagerly you would run to our trysts. How you begged to see me again. How you promised you'd do anything I asked. By your own free will you said this. And now you claim that Dresden fell because of me. No, no, my dear. That was entirely your own doing. I'll beat your lying lips into your filthy throat. Now, Staunton, don't say things like that. Not about these lips, the ones you kissed so sweetly. Staunton, dearest, don't you love me anymore? Remember how good we were together. I was so hoping that we could patch things up. I'll kill you! Oh, that was, uh, interesting. But now we're fighting. Wizard. Discari Cultist is high priority. No without risk. Nicely done. Blades up. It should work. Is it flawed? This is definitely a slightly more dangerous spread.
Thank you, Staunton. I should have had, uh... I should have had Creed fire off a lion's call. Caster's down. Second shot went into the dretch. We're doing okay so far. Got to knock out these demons. I think they're the uh, most dangerous thing left on the board right now. The light take you. Ow. There we go. Oh, nice. Bit late now, but let's go ahead and rally the troops. Nice job, Lan. Good boy, Kaiser. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get that thing off the field. Even Beth is scared of it. There we go. That just leaves the stragglers in back. Huh. Good for her. Thank you, Kaiser. The unholy symbol of Discari, the demon lord who attacked Canabras, drawn in human blood. Delightful. Okay, onward. We're hanging in there. Thanks, Lan. As soon as you step into the chamber, your vision seems to darken and your knees buckle. You struggle to keep your balance. 
The air in here is laden with the power coming from the stone. Suddenly, your head is filled with voices. Screaming, whispering, cackling, threatening. Voices pleading for help, shrieking curses and taunts. You blink, and the illusion passes. A demon with a mocking smile stands beside the wardstone. Congratulations! You made it all the way here. This is it, your precious wardstone. But what are you planning to do now, hmm? I could kill you where you stand. But wouldn't it be nice if you could die in battle, like heroes? No, I want you to die in despair, scrabbling around like rats in the blighted ruins of your city. Blind and broken, your flesh scabbed and seeping, and every moment knowing precisely what was done to you. Sounds terrifying, except that's how we've been living for generations. There isn't a soul who can resist the temptations of the abyss. Even a stone can be turned. I'm not joking. Your precious wardstone, weakened from the injury inflicted by Discari, has almost succumbed to my charms. Soon the whole barrier around the world wound, the gift of your useless goddess, will be a weapon of the abyss. Just a little more, and boom. Minago's laugh rings through the chamber. Every city with one of these eyesores stuck in the middle of it, from Kenebris to Nerosian, will turn into a smoking crater, and all the mortals into red sludge beneath our hooves. So, you have a choice. Especially you, my pet. The demon blows Staunton a kiss, then holds out her leg, which ends in a cloven hoof instead of a foot. Kiss me on my dainty hoof. Pledge your loyalty to Baphomet. And when the world falls, its ruins shall be yours. Who are you? You've already forgotten me. You mortals have awfully short memories, even shorter than your little lives. Staunton, sweetums, don't you want to introduce me to your friends properly? No? Well, I'd better do it myself. I am Monago, Lilitu and faithful servant of Baphomet and leader of his armies. This city is mine now. I'm just starting to settle in, get things just how I like them. But once I'm finished, I promise you, the results will be simply to die for. And it was such a charming little place until you sullied it with your presence. It had such lovely boulevards, quiet and shaded. You took those away from me, and I shan't forgive you for that. They have done much worse things than spoil the promenades. All the people they've killed. Yes, yes, of course. You're right. I grieve for the common folk as well. You feel a righteous fury swell within you. How dare this demon besmirch the ground of this beautiful world with her hooves? A world created by gods and cultivated by mortals. And these cultists, how dare they betray all that is sacred in this world and join the forces of the foulest evil? Can they repent and redeem themselves? Or have they followed the path of evil past the point of no return? The Wardstone seems to sense your thoughts. The chamber grows slightly brighter. What are you doing to the stone? Well, quite. What am I doing to it? The demon brings her clawed fingers coquettishly to her lips. Probably the same thing I did to many of your comrades. Sweetly and tenderly persuading it to abandon the mortals and join our side. Prepare to fight to the death, demon. We won't let that happen. You feel a sudden rush of wild rage, and with it comes a feeling of monstrous, unbridled, destructive power. It is like the power you felt in the shield maze, when you were confronting Savamalek, but now it feels more fully fledged, more conscious. Your victory celebrations are a little premature, demon. Echoing the holy flame erupting from your hand, the light also gets brighter and brighter 
until it floods the chamber. You hear the voices again, stronger now. They repeat your words like a choir of angels. The demon giggles, but you hear a note of astonishment in her laughter. A man standing among the cultists turns to her. Hey, no eyes. Didn't you tell us that heaven had turned its back on us and no one would come to our aid? Don't listen to her. The fiend wants us to lose all hope. She won't succeed. The cultists glance at each other, hesitating. At last, the man who was first to speak up against Monago rips Baphomet's unholy symbol from his chest and casts it to the floor. I'm done with this shit. I only followed this hoofed menace because I thought the Crusaders had had it, and there was no other way to protect my family. But now I see that there is hope. I won't bow before these heinous idols ever again. If they kill me, at least I'll die a decent death. Yes, return to our side, friends. Have courage. We will welcome you back, and heaven never abandoned you, no matter what this deceiver told you. A tattoo-covered cultist reaches for his weapon. Turncoat, I'll cut out your heart. We'll see how tough you really are. An elf with a face deformed by acid burns throws her unholy symbol at him. We let you frighten us once, but it won't happen again. Oh, lovely. Yep, but that is less lovely. Our two frontline tanks, both fatigued. So that means no charging. Hmm. Alright, so let's spread out. Monago's a caster, so we want to uh, minimize those area attacks. And we definitely have to kill those guys. We'll bring about half our guys towards them. Blades up. And let's embiggen someone. Might as well go with Creed. on the radius here, but let's see if this gets everyone. Oh, nice, it did. Moving up. Goodness. Um. Well, just you and me, Kaiser. Fitting, I suppose. I get the impression we are not supposed to win this. You know what, we'll just let the uh, NPCs duke it out while we finish off these last couple of cultists. Well, so much for that idea. 
That's it. I'm tired of playing around now. Irritation seeps into Monago's voice. You want to know what will happen when I'm done with the Wardstone? Here's a little demonstration. The demoness whispers a spell and a wave of darkness sweeps through the chamber. Your companions wince in pain, but it is nothing compared to what you feel. Thousands of voices once again burst into your mind, drowning you in their moans, screams, and sobs. Pain rocks through your skull. Your evil spells won't stop a righteous army. Iomade is with us. Yes, yes, keep telling yourself that. The roar of voices blends into an unbearable wall of screaming. Your vision goes dark. I am going to say that uh, could have probably gone a bit better, but it is just the prologue. Praise Iomade, you woke up. Healing your wounds was easy, but you were unconscious for so long. I was starting to worry we'd lost you. Uh, did we win? Sadly, no. We couldn't stand up to the demoness. Her spells were too strong. Irabeth punches her fist into her palm. It's all right. We'll handle it somehow. You blacked out, but Staunton and I managed to get you here, to the Defender's Heart. It used to be a tavern, but now it's our headquarters. We're gathering our forces here, and we're preparing to strike back. I found a cultist dispatch in the dungeons. It seems they're holed up in the Tower of Estrud. Demons have been filling Kenebris with their spies and infiltrators for a long time. Unfortunately, I don't have enough people to attack the place right now. At least not blindly. I'd be grateful if you snuck in there and scouted out the situation. But just scouting. Don't be a hero. What's the situation in the city? Bad, but not hopeless. We're constantly getting news, and new sources of resistance keep springing up in the districts where everyone seemed to be dead. The survivors are gathering here. You should see them. Their faces, their eyes, burning with determination. The city is destroyed, but our resistance is not broken. We will keep fighting. What are we doing next? You heard what that demon said. They're going to desecrate the Wardstone and blow up the whole barrier around the World Wound. That would be an even worse disaster than the World Wound's expansion before the Second Crusade. Not only Canabras, but every city with a Wardstone will be destroyed, including the capital. We can't allow that, no matter what. We will retake it, even destroy it if we must. Iomade's gift must not become a weapon of the Abyss. Tell me more about the Wardstones. The Wardstones are a gift of Iomade, created personally by her herald, a mighty angel and general of the Celestial Armies. Oh, okay, this is exactly what she told us last time, so we'll just... Move it on. Can I help you in any way? First of all, we need to decide what to do with the stone once we get to it. Irabeth lowers her voice, almost to a whisper. What I'm about to say is classified. A traveler came to the city recently, a blind elf calling himself the Storyteller. He insisted that he be allowed to examine the Wardstone, and he raised the alarm when his study was finished. Even before the demon attack, he had found some damage or flaw in the stone. Prelate Hulrun dismissed his words as nonsense, borderline blasphemy, but between you and me, the prelate's opinion isn't worth much. I think the storyteller knew what he was talking about. We could use his advice right now, if only we knew where he was. Hmm. I remember the storyteller spent a lot of time talking to Staunton, a dwarf from my unit. You saw him during the demon attack. 
The elf asked him about the history of the Crusades. Maybe the storyteller told Staunton something about where we could find him if anything happened. There's another problem. After the attack, the demons began to gather their forces at Grey Garrison. It will be even harder to take them with a head-on assault. But I once heard soldiers talking about a secret entrance to the garrison. Trouble is, I have no idea where to look for it. While you explore the city, please keep your eyes open, in case you find something we can use. The half-orc smiles at you encouragingly. And one last thing. The Eagle Watch has lost a lot of soldiers recently. Some were killed, but others simply haven't been seen since the attack. In the chaos that is now Canabras, it's next to impossible to confirm anything for sure. Urabeth clears her throat. One of the missing fighters is Janna Eldori, a new recruit in the Watch. She got along well with Sela, and she often went drinking with her. I honestly thought Sela and Janna had died together. But now Seal has returned with you, and there's no sign of Janna. If you learn anything of her whereabouts when you're out in the city, please report back. Eldori, huh? That's fun. May the goddess help you. We're still fighting, which means that Kenebris still hasn't fallen. If you come across any groups in the city that can fight, send them here to the Defender's Heart. We'll need every fighter we can muster for the final assault. Oh, yes, uh, one more thing. If you're in the area, check out this address. It's our house, mine and Anivia's. Well, it was our house. If the building is still standing, open the hidden compartment in the kitchen. It's filled with supplies for a rainy day. You can take whatever you find. You have more need of it. Well, that is quite a lot to digest. Although I am amused by the fact that we're still giant. At least for another 90 seconds. I'm also amused by the fact that they uh, work the storyteller in there. That, of course, is a familiar face for those of you who have uh, actually played or watched Kingmaker content. From what I understand, he's essentially taking the place of an NPC from the original adventure path that this uh, whole game is based on. Uh, the dead guy that we stumbled across back when we first arrived in the caves. The elf that Camellia was looting. Anyway, I believe this officially brings us to the end of the prologue and sets the stage for Act 1, the retaking of Canabras. Which, judging from the non-stop torrent of updates to our journal going on overhead, appears to be a rather involved process. So, let's uh, hit the pause button for now. I will see if I can get our inventory wrangled and under control. And we will pick up here next time. As the next stage of our adventure begins. And we spend some time getting to know the people scattered around Defender's Heart. Got a lot more dialogue in our future. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube and Twitch channels, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. As always, links are in the description.